Funding for the 2014 Iowa Girls High School State Track and Field Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Whether you live in rural Iowa or in the big city, the Iowa Network Services family of companies and your local provider are working together to keep you connected by offering technology and business solutions like internet, data networking, and other business services. The INS family of companies keeping communities connected today and tomorrow. Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay, is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Track and Field Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Welcome to the IPTV studio. We have an exciting hour ahead for you. We are going to break down all four classes of the Iowa High School Girls State Track and Field Championships from Des Moines. Paul Yeager alongside Jim Kirby and Coach, this is a meet that's great, but please set the scene for us. Paul, we had all the elements for a great weekend. Great weather, great crowds, 34,000 people saw. Three days of great track and field, nine state records, lots of competition, lots of color, fun. A lot of college runners in the making, maybe a national champion or two, possibly an Olympian. We're going to start in uh, the longest race that the girls have, and that's the 3,000 meters. This is a double waterfall start. We are going to show you class 4A. Okay, we're going to watch uh, Stephanie Jenks, and she's a known triathlete, one of the best in the nation. She's already qualified for the USA Junior Olympic team. She's going to go to China this summer and p compete in the triathlon. She's also going to compete in the Adidas Dream Mile. She's going to compete against all the best milers, the high school milers in the country this month. And this is a 3,000, which means they're running just short of two miles. And Jenks just pulls away from the beginning. And really, the race isn't so much for first. It is right. a race for second. Well, everybody knows in this race they're going to let Stephanie go. And then the real race is for second and third. You can already see that pack farming behind her. All right, so Stephanie Jenks is off and running. And uh, she has, uh, she's already been uh, named Gatorade Iowa Girls Track and Field Athlete of the Year last year. But now we're going to catch up with uh, some of the throwers from the race. We'll be back to the 3,000-meter run in a moment. The shot put Class 1A event included two flights of 12 competitors. The 24 throwers each made three attempts. The eight girls with the longest throws moved on to the finals, earning them three more attempts. Winners were determined by the longest throw out of all six attempts. Here's a look at the top three finishers in the shot put class 1A event. Third place went to Michaela Turwe, a sophomore from West Lyon, with a distance of 38 feet, 3.5 inches. In second place was Shelby Williams, a sophomore from Pekin, with 38 feet, 8.50 inches. The shot put class 1A champion was Megan Anderson, a senior from Woodbine, with a distance of 39 feet, 10.75 inches. Megan Anderson, seventh last year, state champion your senior year. Tell us what you think. Pretty excited. I'm happy. My, I know my family's happy for me. I'm just glad for everyone that came. And I know it's always been a goal of mine. I started out seventh grade first place, and I like to finish that way too. Caitlin Clayton of Esterville Lincoln Center is second in Class 2A to Katie Birchmeyer. And uh, we move on to Class 3A now. Shelby Gunnels of Solon. Mary Wester of Mount Pleasant is second. And Mia Davis of Gilbert is third in Class 3A. And 4A, Blair Thomas, who's headed 
to Iowa State to play basketball wins the Class 4A shot put. In the discus Class 2A event, 24 athletes made three throws to qualify for the finals. The top eight throwers were given another three attempts. The longest throw out of all six attempts determined the standings in this event. Here's a look at the top three throws in the Class 2A discus event. In third place was Ashley Gaffey, a junior from Iowa City, Regina, with 129 feet, 6 inches. Second place went to Kate Birchmeyer, a junior from Davis County with 137 feet. The discus Class 2A champion was Kiana Phelps with 150 feet, 4 inches. The sophomore from Kingsley Pearson Woodbury Central also won this event her freshman year and leads the nation in high school girls discus with a personal best of 179 feet, 7 inches. How do you feel about what you threw today? Um, it was definitely not what I wanted. Uh, I've been throwing a lot farther in practice and everything, and, you know, you can't expect a PR every day. Uh, I would have liked to today, but we thought there was going to be um, a pretty good wind, and there really wasn't. I'll definitely shoot for um, winning next year and the next year after that, too. Sydney Laufenberg, a sophomore from Prince of Peace, is your 1A discus champ. Haley Landers of North Butler is second in 3A. Maddie Niles of Dubuque Wallard. Mary Wester is second from Mount Pleasant. And Cassie Hoym of Decora is third in the discus. And in 4A, Sarah Kalkoff, a junior from Newton, wins with a throw of 140 feet 11 inches. Let's go back to the track for the finish of the 3,000 meter run in Class 4A. Stephanie Jenks still in control of this ball game. Coach, break down her stride as a runner. Well, it's very efficient, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to use as less energy as possible, stay in a straight line, good foot plant, keep your shoulders down, keep everything in a straight line, uh, and she does it better than anybody. We talk about uh, the race was for second, and as we take a look at towards the back of the pack, as Jenks is just passing people mm -hmm. uh, wherever she goes. Well, it's hard to stay motivated out there. She's going to be close to a record, if not breaking it, and she's doing that by herself. She's not racing anybody except the time, and she's chasing Katie Flood's record right now. And she can see the clock in two locations, the scoreboard and also on the south end, and she looks up. You can tell she knows she's very, very close to a, uh, a, a record. Right, not a lot of extra movement, just efficient, straightforward running fast. Jenks does it. She sets a record. The crowd on their feet. They know history when they see it. Stephanie Jenks, your winner in Class 4A. And the battle, though, comes down for second and third place. That's Carissa Schweitzer from Dowling and Jordan Cleve from Johnston. Steph, another state title, another record. What do you think? I, I'm really happy with it. I mean, it came down pretty close again, but I just kept digging for something else. Are you conscious of those records? Is that what's motivating you up front? Um, yeah, I mean, at Drake, I was going for the 3,000 records because Katie Flo is here, and I thought it'd be special. So um, I came back this time, you know, hoping that I could improve on that. Carisha Schweitzer was second. Jordan Cleave of Johnston was third. Great race there down the stretch between those two runners who have seen a lot of each other as the season has gone on. Rebecca Topham, great weekend for the Griswold Junior. A time of 9.56.73. She also had some other good finishes. Aaliyah Sievert of Sibley Ochin is your champion in Class 2A. She moved up a class this year as the school size changed. And she still dominates. Grace Gibbons, the junior from Gilbert in Class 3A, is your 3,000-meter champ. And Abby Caldwell is third. Joy Ripslinger is second. Now time for the 4x8 Class 2A. We're going to show you the finals. This is a waterfall start. Again, the stagger to allow an equal opportunity for all runners. This is a race, Coach, where you have a lot of momentum. You have a lot of mm -hmm. uh, adrenaline. But you have to rein that in. Right, you really do. You have to stay calm because, you know, the excitement, you want to go out hard. and that. But you got to get off the accelerator on the back stretch because if you go out hard, too hard, your second lap is going to be miserable. This is a race where every runner gets two laps around the track. They all run 800. And uh, you start uh, staggered, but then quickly fall into place. And uh, you get along that back stretch, you're feeling pretty good in that first 200. Right. They always say the third 200 is the hardest one. We always say that's the Good Friday 200 because it's a hard 200 because you're getting away from the crowd and you know you have another lap to go. But that's when the strong and the tough runners take over. Regina is coming to the tape first, as is Davis County. They are right there. Western Christian, they were a regional leader, as was Cascade and Regina. All three had some of the best times coming into the meet this week. 
Uh, Mount Vernon is up there. They were one of the hot, they were first last year in this race. Davis County was second, Western Christian third. So very familiar names. They know how to run this race. Well, look at that uh, fight up front between first and second. They are battling back there and trying to hold off that move, trying to stay on the inside, try to keep your opponent on the outside, make her run farther than you are. And that's Western Christian and Regina doing battle there. And here comes Unity Christian, uh, not passing on the corner, but now you can go three wide sure. in the straightaway. Oh, sure, look at that. I and mean, then she's got, look at her turnover. Look at her arms, look at her posture. She's got something left here. Ready to up? And a bad hand up. See, now that cost you that few seconds right there, a bad handoff. And so we talk about, you usually think sprints are where the handoffs are vital, but they're, they're very vital in the distance oh, as well. Oh, absolutely. You're standing there and you're seeing your uh, teammate come in and you get all antsy and you want to get going because somebody's out ahead of you. You still got to sit. Unity Christian of Orange City, they made it to uh, state basketball. They played in that final game in class three. Anna Keel was the starter. Then it was Jordan Boss, Katie Browers is the third leg, and Cassidy DeYoung is the anchor for Unity Christian. Davis County brings in Shelby Graves, Addie McKee, Kaylee Tharp, and Allie McClure. And uh, as you see, making the turn is Unity, Western Christian of Hull, uh, Kylie Van Hull, Erica Dalma, Miranda Holstein, and Alyssa Palama are your runners for those squads. All good runners. And, and Paul, this is when you're in oxygen jet. You're anaerobic and you're trying to carry your speed and you're trying to keep your form. She does a great job. Good handoff there to get it. That's gonna be Cassidy D. Young for Unity Christian. Regina, Mount, I'm sorry. Uh, that's Davis County. Uh, coming out of the end, and it's a, it's a race now in this final eight. Well, uh, three members of this 4x8 team for uh, Western Christian were on their fifth place cross-country team. And so Cassidy DeYoung, you're watching here, she finished fifth in the state in her cross-country meet. This is the 4x8 Class 2A finals. They run this race. So she's out there in front, and she knows that there's people behind her, but she can't quite tell how close they are. So she's got to stay focused. She's got to keep her mind straight, and she's got to run this thing, and she's got to be smart. Do you feel like she's being hunted right now? Uh, you know, I think so. <laughs> right here, it's going to be a real uh, obvious that she's being hunted, and she's going to have to fight this mood off. Unity and Western very close to one another, one in Orange City, the other in Hull. But it's going to be Cassidy DeYoung down the stretch, the junior. Good basketball player, and she is going to break the tape first. Great win by Unity Christian as the battle for second, third, and fourth as they kind of stagger out and just kind of know that we're at the end, but congrats to Unity Christian. All right, now you got the lead for them. Tell them about your, uh, your part of the race. Um, it was hard not having someone push me, but... And then the fourth leg, you really had to hold off uh, Western uh, Christian. What do you think about your race? Oh, I'm surprised. I mean, Alyssa is such a great runner and I was terrified because she has such speed at the end. So I was just trying to finish as strong as I could because I knew that she was going to be coming. So I was just shocked when I crossed the finish line. It's a team sport. You're state champions. Thank, Thank you. you. Unity Christian is your winner in Class 2A. Western Christian second. Davis County is third in the 4 by 8 meter relay in Class 2A and 1A North Lynn. Takes the gold, Central El Cater second, Underwood is third in Class 1A. We move now to Class 3A, Dubuque Waller, Davenport Assumption, and Decora, your winners in those races. And in Class 4A, 4x8, Urbandale with Trina Moreno, Julie Noah, Ashley Norum, and Elsie Prescott win gold. Let's go to Shuttle Hurdle now. This is four runners. Green County in one, Mount Pleasant in three, Clear Creek Amana in five, and Pella is in seven. This is a race, four runners back and forth, back and forth. All right, Paul, you gotta be fast, and you gotta be quick, and you gotta be patient, you gotta sit in the blocks, and all, by the way, you have to keep your rhythm going over the hurdles. Good start. Now, are these your four best hurdlers, and where do you put, how do you stack usually where you put your best Well, you runner? always want your, your hunter, the one that's really aggressive. There, there's a certain personality that you want your anchor to have and sometimes that you're, that's your fastest runner but sometimes it isn't. But a lot can happen in the middle of these races depending on how smooth, whether you can keep your rhythm, how high you are, three-stepping, all those kind of things. That's a nice race being run in lane three and four. Well, Mount Pleasant set the record but they did it in preliminaries and so she, they didn't run as fast in their finals. So now you come for the one who can close it out. 
And here's your anchor, and this is what I mean. You want somebody that's going to be aggressive and that's hungry. And that's why Mount Pleasant wins this particular event three years in a row. Closing it out is Kelsey Phipps. She had a good weekend for Mount Pleasant, and she crosses the tape first for Mount Pleasant as they are your champion in 3A. Leslie, you're a senior. You got to lead for your team. Tell us about your leg. It's unbelievable. Like, we won the third straight state championship. It's something I'll never forget, and I get to spend it with these girls and my younger sister, and it's amazing. Kelsey, what is, what's it like to finish this and be a state champion with your friends? Um, it feels awesome. I just knew I had to finish it for them, and it was coming in a little risky, you know. We had struggle at Drake, but I just knew I had to finish it for them, and that's what I did. Congratulations, girls. Thank you. Thank you. Sydney Taylor, Leslie Taylor, Hannah Becker, Kelsey Phipps, your champion runners for Mount Pleasant in the 4x1 shuttle hurdle relay class 3. Clear Creek Amana is second. Belle Plain takes gold in 1A in the shuttle hurdle. North Lynn is second. Central El Cater is third. And in class 2A, Eddieville Blakesburg is your champ. West Branch and Sibley O'Cheen go 1, 2, 3 in class 2A. And in 4A, it's Urbandale. Cedar Rapids, Jefferson, and Pleasant Valley. Pleasant Valley quietly adding up points with each second, third, fourth place winner. Let's go to the really fast race. This is the one that if you blink, it's over. We're going to talk about the 100 meter dash class 1A. Okay, this is Natasha Kaiser Brown, the coach at Drake. She's the record holder. 11.50 is what they're chasing. We're watching in the middle here on this race. Look to see. Uh, this is a race between uh, Danny Reichert's of Dunkerton and Katie Mossman of Montezuma. Katie's in the middle with the zoom around the front in the blue, and she crosses the tape first in this 100 meter. Katie, last year were third, this year a state champion. What's different between last year and this year? Um, this year I've had a lot of better work ethic, and I've the blocks I struggled in last year, but I've gotten a lot better at those, and I've just worked my best this whole year to improve better. What's it like finishing in front of this great crowd here at Drake? Oh, it's amazing. I've had so many support from the hometown, and they've came support me every day I've ran here, and it feels great to have all their support here. Danny Reichert's the freshman from Dunkard, and I'm pretty sure we haven't heard the end of her career, and Mallory Vodder of BCLUW, she'll get her gold later on in the meet. Maddie Bell of Hudson is your winner in Class 2A. Natalie Hoffman from St. Ansgar is second, and Sarah Boomgarden is third. Rose Ripslinger, the senior from Assumption. She's great in soccer, not too bad in track either. She wins the 3A100, and Jalen Roberts-Lewis, great weekend for her, wins the long jump and the Class 4A 100-meter dash. Some great races so far, great performances uh, individually, but now this could be the best performance by a relay team. Right, we're coming up on the distance medley and Pleasant Valley just ran lights out this week in, the, in their distance medley. The Spartans from Pleasant Valley and the eastern side of the state in the Quad Cities, very good team. They were third last year, they want gold. Let's go back to the famous Blue Oval at Drake University in Des Moines as uh, we're gonna show you this race, which is two, two, four, and eight. Wash is in one, Roosevelt at two, Johnston three, Pleasant Valley four, Urbandale five, uh, Waukee's in lane six, Dowling Catholic in lane seven. This is a 200 out of the blocks. Good starts are important. Right, and this is a big, big stagger, you know, so you can see the whole field. Look how big they're, they're spread out across those two turns. And so it's like the four by two, the start of it, and so you have to have speed, you have to have strength, and you have to have heart. You start on a turn, have a huge run on that back stretch, and then you gotta do the sticks on the other corner. That's right, and it's hard to do this uh, handoff on the turn here because uh, not only you gotta get the stick, but you gotta stay in your lane, and that's hard to do. And that was not a great stick right there in front of us by mm -hmm. Sioux City East in lane eight, but some good stick work around as they run this second leg, the 200. Right, and it's still kind of deceiving and who's in the lead here because of the stagger, but it looks like Kayla Koontz from Dowling Catholic High School has the lead and she might have it, but as the race goes on, that stagger is gonna become more honest. She took the stick from Michaela Cunningham and now it's gonna be Emma Cassup who gets the handoff for Dowling Catholic right there in front, but we mm -hmm. talk about exchanges, that was huge. A little bit, just those little the bobbles cost you seconds. Now, we're gonna run the 400 meter portion of this race. I think you have another nickname when we say 2248. Uh, 2248, this is the strength part of it. And I'll tell you what, this is the red line. These girls are running hard, as fast as they can, and as long as they can. You know, in the, a race like this, the distance melee, it really shows off the depth of your team. You have to have speed, you have to have strength in your quarter miler, and you have to have heart in your 800 meter runner. Urbandale makes a great run there, Ashley Norum 
uh, makes a pass on that back stretch and then passes on the curve. Mm -hmm. And now, though, watch out for Pleasant Valley. We've already seen Alyssa Simon, then Jordan Simon, but this is Addie Swanson. The a freshman. Addie Swanson's a freshman, but she's running like a senior now. Look how smooth she is. Oxygen debt, everything's tying up, but she still looks good. Good handoff, too. Got to have good sticks, even on those distance, and now bringing it home for PV. It's Kayla Salufo, and she's had a great meet so far. These guys from Pleasant Valley, they're committed. They were disappointed in their second place uh, finish as a team last year, and they just went to work, and they're doing it this weekend. The Spartans' rival is Bendorf. They were the best returner from 2013. PV, though, had the best time coming into the state meet. Urbandale was second best, Johnston third, but that's not how they're running right now. Well, Carissa Schweitzer just made a big move into second place. Uh, she's from Dallin Catholic. Carissa's going to go to Missouri next year and be a Tiger. Pleasant Valley, great run. They had a great season. Mm -hmm. Now, she's, she knows that there's people back there lurking, and she's got to keep her form and keep carrying her speed. And this is what great 800 meter runners do. When you get into anaerobic condition, when you get past that threshold, when you're in oxygen jet, look how smooth she is. Look at her arms. Look at everything's in a straight line. That's perfect, Paul. That's perfect running right there. Good coaching and a lot of it is just good talent sometimes. And they'll make that final run. This is uh, Kaylee here, she's just had a great race, and you, you talk about her form, mm -hmm. but what's the mental makeup of, of an 800 runner? Well, you have to be ready to be uncomfortable. 800 is uncomfortable, especially right now. You couldn't tell this was her first 200 or her last 200 by her form, but she's hurting right now, and look at Carissa Schweitzer still battling in second place. Crossing the finish line first, Pleasant Valley 357.59, a meet record, and to date, the best in the nation. Okay, Alyssa, you guys broke a record. Uh, under four minutes in the uh, distance melee, what are your thoughts? Um, well, it was mostly our team helping us. We trained all season, to everyone to have their best race here at state, and none of it could have happened without us three and our teammates sitting in the stands cheering for us. Okay, Addie, you got the lead in the 400. Tell us about your leg. Um, I knew I had to give it all I had and get the lead as best as I could. I enjoy running from behind. Like, I love it and kind of wished to be in a better position than I was in that race. Okay, Kayla, 209 was your split. That's Shelby Houlihan territory. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, that's awesome. I mean, I'm so happy for everyone. Um, yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's a team effort. What, what do you think about being a state champion with these girls? Um, I wouldn't have picked any other group of girls to do it with, especially my sister, and to give her a state title and a state record for her senior year is like the best present I could have ever given to her. All right, congratulations, girls. Thank you. Thank you. The Spartans, those points would add up to a team title later in the day if they could keep running this pace. Pleasant Valley, 357.59, fantastic race. Dolly Catholic and Urbandale round out the race. North Lynn, Jessup, Trison, and Neola in 1A in the distance med. Great run by the Jayhawks there. Cascade is first. Eagle Grove second, Davis County third in class 2A distance medley relay. Cascade was down at the state basketball tournament earlier this year, as was Davenport Assumption. They also uh, had a good weekend at the soccer tournament as well uh, back in, earlier in the month. Let's move now to the 400 meter race in 3A. Watch in the middle, Taylor Shuring, Olivia Loy, Megan Moss in the middle, lanes three, four, five. That's for your fastest runners. This is one time around. And Jim, this is a sprint. Right, we talked about being uncomfortable in the 800. Well, there's nothing comfortable about the 400, maybe the first 100 meters, but these girls are all dialed in and they know it's gonna get uncomfortable, especially at the end. Lane's all the way and already in lane, in the middle of the track, you see a move. There's Olivia Loy, she's already making a move, making up the stagger. So she had the best time coming into the meet. Megan Moss had the second best time from Western Dubuque and Taylor Shearing was third. Olivia Loy was the champion in this race last year. Rose Ripslinger, uh, is also in this race, and she is not to be counted out. Well, Olivia Loy, she's a 200-meter runner great, but she's able to carry her speed. Look at how she can carry her speed. That same 200-meter speed, that's what makes a great 400-meter runner, how you have the strength and the heart and the speed to carry it. And when I say Rose Ripslinger in this race, she actually was in the slower heat, so you're going to think that Deanna Slight is going to get second, but Rose Ripslinger will finish second to Olivia Loy from Anamosa, the senior, in a record time of 56.05. Great win for Olivia Loy, the senior from Anamosa. Okay, Olivia, tough race. You set two records. That race took a lot out of you, didn't it? Yeah, definitely gave it all I got.
So what do you do for an encore after breaking two state records today? Well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> okay, you're a senior, uh, going out in a big way. What's winning these state championships your senior year mean to you? Oh, it means everything. It means so much to me. What are you going to do next year? I'm going to go to uh, community college in Maryland. So. Are you going to run? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Olivia. Thank you. Olivia Lois won. As we mentioned, Rose Ripslinger, the story there, running in a slower heat, gets second, beats out Deanna Slide, a freshman from Boone. Jolissa Kriegel, the sophomore from BGM Brooklyn, is your champion in class 1A, 400 meter dash. And we move to the next class of 2A. Jasmine Stabler of Clayton Ridge of the Junior, a fantastic meet for her. She's your winner there. Natalie Halfman is second from St. Ansgar. In 4A, Larkin Chapman, the sophomore from Muscatine. Addie Swanson, the freshman from PV, is in second place. We move now to the 4x2 Class 1A. Here are the big lane assignments. Bishop Garrigan of Algona in third, Wapsie Valley in lane four, and Starmont in lane five. They are in lanes all the way in this race. And again, we talk about that 200, Coach. Mm -hmm. It's that tough stagger. That's right. It's a big stagger. Um, they're spread out. Lane one gets to look at the entire field moving away from them. And so having these handoffs on the turn is difficult. You gotta keep your form, you gotta stay within yourself, and you gotta sit there in that exchange zone and not get out too fast. These handoffs are crucial. Wapsie Valley had the best time coming into the meet, Starmont second, and Bishop Garrigan of Algona was in third. The Drake Relays champion in this race comes from another class, but they Wapsie Valley also a very good run here as uh, we go into the third leg these and two, into the fourth leg. These 200 meter runners, they, they love it. They love running this turn. They love running it hard. And here they go. This is another important handoff. And the, now the staggers start becoming a little bit more honest. Now you can see a little bit easier who's in the lead. And you can see lane six appears to be in the lead right now. And you try to just give your, and that's Maquoketa Valley in lane six, Starmont's in five, Wapsie Valley in four, Bishop Garrigan's in lane three, West Hancock of Britt is in lane two, North Lynn, the Lynx, who'd have a very big weekend uh, as a team, are in lane one, Nashua Plainfield in lane seven, Alta Aurelia in lane eight. And from right there, you can't quite tell as they come to the final runner, the anchor leg. Whoever moves first, looks like lane four right there. And that would be Wapsie Valley, the Warriors from Fairbank, Oren, and Reedland in Northeast Iowa making a run, but now look out in lane three. That's Algona Bishop Garrigan, and uh, that's Nicole Bear, the anchor. She took it from Aisha Miller, and it's gonna be Bishop Garrigan. I don't know if Abby Bozninski can close the gap, but it's gonna be Bishop Garrigan down the stretch. Nicole Bear crosses the tape first. Emotion starts to get her. That's a state championship for Bishop Garrigan. Okay, Aisha, you finished fourth last year. What's it like being a state champion this year? It feels awesome. We went out there, we ran our race, we just went for time, and I guess it just paid off. Okay, Nicole, you were the anchor. Uh, tell us about your leg. Felt awesome. I just couldn't even think about anything else besides getting to that finish line. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about the handoffs. How were your handoffs today? I thought they were pretty good. Mine were great. I know we've struggled with handoffs all year, but today they just went perfect. Congratulations, girls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bishop Garrigan won, Wapsie two, Starmont three, the Stars. They're in a time of 148.95, but Bishop Garrigan 146, great run there. Cascade, Abby Meyer, Celine Rickles, Sydney Rickles, Holly Hunt, Abby Meyer, the point guard from the Cascade basketball team. PCM Monroe, a second Sioux center, is third. In 3A, Dubuque Waller, MOC Floyd Valley, and ADM Adele in the 4 by 200 meter relay, class 3A. And in 4A, the big school, Cedar Rapids Jefferson, Dowling Catholic, and Waukee go one, two, three. Going to go back to a shorter race, the 100 hurdles. This is class 4A. Here are your lane assignments. Look in the middle. Mallory Smith in three, Mary Young in four, Madison Ranshaw of Jefferson in lane five, Kelly Wong of Centennial of Ankeny in lane six. Watch the middle of the track here, coach. Well, this is Mary Young uh, from Riverdale. She's going to go to Drake next year. And all year long, she has been the class of the state. And that's tough running when you have to have that moniker on you all year round going to be Mary Young as she crosses that 10th hurdle and doesn't even look like she was trying. She makes it look so easy. How is that possible, you ask? But we'll talk to her in a moment. Congratulations, Mary Young. Mary, do you get tired of winning all the time? Uh, what's, what makes this different? 
No, um, it makes a difference because this will be my last race as a high schooler. Um, it felt good. I was trying to get in the 13s, but I ran a little slower, but I'm so happy. So. What do you do with all these awards? Do you have a special room for them? Well, I have my grad party tonight, so we'll be hanging them up today. So. What about next year? Next year I'll be going to Drake, so I'll be here again. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Madison Ranshaw from Cedar Rapids Jefferson is second. Dimitri Hamilton, the sophomore from Des Moines East, the Scarlets, is in third. In class 1A, Mallory Vaudrey, that's her championship of the weekend. Lots of close finishes uh, for her other races from BCLUW. Dallas Weiss from Nashville Plainfield is second. Emily Matthews, Garner Hayfield Ventura is your champion in class 2A in the 100 meter hurdles. And in class 3A, Kelsey Phipps from Mount Pleasant. She was on that uh, great shuttle hurdle champion team earlier in the meet, and she is your winner in that class. Let's move now to the 800 meter run, class 2A. We're gonna be watching a couple of uh, big runners here. Again, a staggered start. Right, uh, this is a double waterfall. It gives everybody a good chance. You can have a bigger field, and so the upper waterfall will stay up top until the back stretch, and then they'll all break for lane one. And we talked about this during the four by eight race, and that's where you've got your four best 800 runners usually. Mm -hmm. Now you're just looking for the best. That's right. And this is a, a race where it, it shows your training. There's a lot of good 400 meter runners, but there's fewer good 400 meter runners that can run the 800 well. Why is that? Well, because it has a lot to do with training. Um, it has a lot to do with your, how you're able to carry your speed, your strength. Um, and maybe, you know, how, how your season sets up. Maybe you can have the time to train as an 800 meter runner. It all depends, but these, co these kids are in a class of their own. Jasmine Stabler of Clayton Ridge is uh, leading and uh, she's getting pushed. She had a great meet, but a very good tight race there. And as a runner, would you rather have somebody next to you, in front of you, or behind you? Well, this is not the place you want to be. Most runners want to be off somebody's shoulder and let them lead. Now, Jasmine, 45 minutes before this race, she ran a tough 58 second 400 meters. So she's already feeling it already. And this is going to be a big strain on her. Stabler uh, just kind of pulling away here as she comes into the back stretch as we fast forward a little bit into turn three of the last portion of this 800, the last 200 to go. And again, Paul, we'll watch and we'll see the difference between the cadence and the rhythm and the turnover between these runners. And you'll see Jasmine, how, how smooth she is and how, how she's keeping her speed. She's not tying up. She's not fighting against herself. Everything's going well for her. Everything is a straight line and she's even picking it up. Well, this is what champions do, a big kick. Stabler had a very good Drake relays a year ago and this year, and she puts on another great performance, crossing the tape first in the Class 2A 800-meter run. Congratulations to her. And uh, there's a race for second, and just passed right at the end. You just got to go all the way through the tape. You got to run through the finish. Good race. Jasmine, you've had a tough 45 minutes. You ran 55-something in your anchor, and now you won the uh, 800. What do you think this morning? It's unbelievable. I'm just so surprised what my body can do. I mean, after the sprint ride, that was great. And then I just caught my breath and came back out here for the eight. Okay, Jasmine, you have had all the success. What keeps you motivated? My teammates help a lot, my family, my friends. My community is really supportive. Everybody's always cheering me on. Congratulations. Thank you. Jasmine Stabler, your winner from Clayton Ridge. Natalie Hoffman from another heat is second, as is Tiffany Christensen, who's third. Rebecca Topham from Griswold, great meet for her. She's the champion in class 1A 800 meter run. And in 3A, Kennedy King of Davenport Assumption with a time of 216.69. Joy Ripslinger, the freshman from Assumption, her teammate is in second place. And Kaylee Salufo, a junior from Pleasant Valley, is your champion in class 4A. Stephanie Jenks, second, and Larkin Chapman is third from Muscatine. All right, Coach Jim Kirby, we have some great individual performances, but there's also a team aspect of this going on. Well, Paul, every coach is doing a lot of math right now. They're doing a lot of ciphering in the stands, trying to get every point possibility. How many points can we get out of this? Every event is being added up, trying to get that team title. And as we come down the stretch, we start with the 200-meter run. This is a race with Rose Ripslinger. She's had a great meet, as is Olivia Loy and Carrie Defoe of ADM. And this is a race that is, again, just a great sprint. Rose is in three, Olivia in for Carrie Defoe, the three best times right there in the middle. Uh, they're the ones you're going to want to watch. Well, Olivia Loy set the state record just in the pre uh, previous heat in the preliminaries, but here Rose is going to break it. And Rose, 
who was had the seventh best time coming into the state meet, is the one you want to watch on the inside. Olivia Loy in blue, Rose is in the red and gold. They are clean through the start and through turn one and into the final back stretch. Swing it off that turn, Paul, that's what's important. Run the turn and swing it. Loy feels Ripslinger on her side and Rose puts the hammer down and will pull away to win the class 2A 200 meter rim. Okay, Rose, tell us about your race. Uh, I was feeling good after that 100. My legs are feeling great today. I got out. It was nice to have Loy in front of me. I could watch her the whole time. I felt really strong the entire race. I haven't been very good at finishing twos. I've, I knew I just had to lock in and finish that race. Well, you're on a roll. What about the four by one? I think we're out to get the four by one too. That'll be a fun race to watch. What are you gonna do next year, Rose? I'm playing soccer at the University of Iowa. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Great track athlete, not too bad in soccer either. Rose Ripslinger in class 3A. Olivia Loy is second from Anamosa, Carrie Defoe from ADM. Adele is in third. In 1A, Katie Mossman, the sophomore from Montezuma, time of 25.79. Jolissa Kriegel from BGM Brooklyn is second. Jasmine Stabler from Clayton Ridge. Uh, Natalie Haftman from St. Ansgar and Maddie Bell from Hudson. All three of those girls, great uh, races. And in four in the 200, Jalen Roberts-Lewis, Alicia Harrington from Cedar Falls, and Lucy Schneckloff from Cedar Rapids-Jefferson. We move on to the 400-meter hurdles. This uh, is interesting as always. Abby Musser is in three from Woodward Granger. Rebecca Topham from Griswold in lane four. Abby Murphy from Earlham in lane five. This race, Coach, is a sprint, but oh, by the way, you've got hurdles. Mm -hmm. Well, just imagine how difficult a 400 meter run is in general. Okay, and then add 10 hurdles. I mean, this is one of the toughest races on the track. Rebecca Topham from Griswold, very good weekend for her as they get into that first turn on the far straightaway. Mm -hmm. You gotta be fast in between the hurdles. And this is an odd combination for Rebecca. She's a great distance runner. Not many distance runners excel at the 400 meter hurdles. Why is that? Well, it's hard on you, and it's hard to train. This takes a lot of training to be able to do this. Uh, physiologically, it's a lot like the 800, but it's tough, especially when you're getting tired right now. And not only are you tired, you've got to keep your form, and those hurdles just keep coming at you. I always thought this was the toughest race. Mm -hmm. Do you still think it is still I, the toughest? It's, it's got to be, because the 400's hard enough, and hurdles are hard. It's just tough. If you think you're just fast, you got to throw in those hurdles. And now you really have to focus. Are mm -hmm. you counting steps here, or are you just worried no. about not falling? I think you're just trying to get to the finish line. And here's Rebecca. she got to keep her form. you got to concentrate. And that's what happens when you don't concentrate. Rebecca Topham, right there in lane four, is going to cross the tape first from Griswold. She had the best time coming in, and she goes home with gold. All right, Rebecca, uh, seven-time state champion. Is there something more special about the hurdles than the distance races? Um, well, the hurdles is kind of more special because, um, like, it's just, like, my hardest event. And, mm -hmm. well, it's, like, the most competition. So it feels good to get that one out of the way. It's kind of an odd combination for a distance girl like yourself. So, so tell us about the difference in training uh, between the distance races and the hurdles. Well, it's hard to train for, like, all of them. So I've just been focusing on the hurdles since... That's um, like the most competition, but mm -hmm. um, it's like hard to like balance it out, but um, we just try our best. So. Abby Murphy is second from Earlham and Abby Musser. They were the three best in the state and they go one, two, three at the state meet in class 1A. In 2A, Lauren Headland from Hinton is your champion with a time of 103.74 in class 2A 400 meter hurdles. In 3A, Taylor Richardson, the junior from Oskaloosa, Kelsey Phipps from Mount Pleasant. She medaled in three events this weekend. Sarah Plock, the junior from Iowa City. City High is your champion in class 4A with a time just over a minute at 101.97. Going on now to the sprint medley relay. This one is lanes all the way. And in the middle, we're gonna do 2A here. Northwest Manson of Northwest Webster, Hudson in four, Clayton Ridge in five. Well, it's going to be a combination of the sprints, and this is going to drive coaches crazy because you got a 100 and 100. you got quick, quick speed and strength in that 400-meter leg. Here we are in Class 2A. 
Hudson had the best time coming in, Clayton Ridge the second best, and Manson Northwest Webster had the third best. Cascade won this last year. Hudson was second and Des Moines Christian was third and they're uh, all in this race again this year. We're watching the lane assignments. Right here in front of you is Roland Story. And in seven, getting that handoff was Des Moines Christian. There comes Mount Vernon. In the middle, look out for Manson Northwest Webster. That's in lane three in the orange and blue. Inside in one is OABCIG. And again, great run from Roland Story out on the edge, but there's a stagger to consider That's here. right. There's a big stagger here, and this is the 200-meter leg of this, so they're going to hand it off to the strength part of this race, and that's their quarter-miler. This is a one, one, two, and four, right, that's Coach? Right. right, and the 400-meter runners will go to the uh, far corner, and then they'll break. They'll break to lane one. Let's start looking for lane four in Hudson. Chelsea Miller, Casey Miles, who was on that state basketball team, Lindsey Cook also there, and Maddie Bell. Maddie Bell had a very good weekend. She's running the anchor for the Pirates. Right, and Maddie Bell, you're right, she's had a great weekend. And, and, and to run, keep running these quarters, how many quarters has she run, 400 meters? That takes a lot out of you. And she is uh, making the turn right there for Hudson. Des Moines Christian is running second right there. That is Oksana Covey. She is running second. Does she have enough to catch Maddie Bell? Look out for Clayton Ridge. They've got Jasmine Stabler on this mm -hmm. final run as well, who's had a good weekend. And Maddie knows it, and this is hard to do. You're already dying right now, and you know there's competition. You know those girls are coming. Hudson from lane four, Maddie Bell, the junior, anchors the Hudson Pirates to a championship here in the sprint medley in Class 2A. Tell us about what the difference is between this year and last year. And we were so close last year, like hundreds of a second off, and we were, we wanted that title really bad. Hey, Maddie, 55-4 was your anchor. Tell us about your anchor leg. I was running scared. I knew that I'd have people on my tail wanting to get me, but I wasn't going to let it happen. We wanted this title so badly, and I was going to give it my all so that this team could have that title. Congratulations, girls. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. The Hudson Pirates, Chelsea Miller, Casey Miles, Lindsey Cook, Maddie Bell, they made a great run into the title game in basketball, and here they win the sprint medley. North Lynn in 1A, Dunkerton and Tri-Center Neola go 1-2-3 in Class 1A in the sprint med. Decorah, Boone, and Dubuque Waller go 1-2-3 in Class 3A. Very close race there between Decorah and Boone, uh, just four tenths of a second. And in the big schools, Cedar Rapids, Jefferson, Urbandale, and Pleasant Valley, Third place finish for the Spartans, Coach. It adds up over time. That's right, all those points. This is a good one. 1,500-meter run. This is the uh, Class 3A. We're going to be looking at Grace Gibbons, Abby Caldwell from Waverly Shell Rock, and Dondi Schmidt from Spirit Lake. And also, don't forget Maddie Waymeyer. This one starts it's just short of a mile. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talk about they're all sprints. You have to have a different gear, don't you, to run right. this race all out? Yeah, well, this, had, this sets up uh, long before the track season starts. This is about mileage. It's about training. It's about conditioning yourself to be able to carry your speed when you get depleted, when you're in oxygen jet, when you go anaerobic at the end of this race. The one who can carry that speed the longest and most efficiently is going to win the race. What's the best race to train or the best distance to train? Are you always trying to run a two mile or a three mile like you would in cross country? Well, uh, it all depends on what you're doing uh, at the time. Um, these kids have put a lot of miles in and they've done a lot of hard work. They've done a lot of workouts and it's all coming together right here. And this is where they're going to see if they can make it pay off. Now we're seeing a little more spread, and we still have to look out for Grace Gibbons. She ran a great race in the 3,000, and now what do you think she has left in this 1,500? Well, she's had a big weekend, and we have to watch her turnover and watch her arms and make sure that she's not straining or getting everything out of whack here. So she's trying to stay smooth. And look at Maddie Waymire on the backstretch. She's going to go to Missouri uh, and be a tiger with Carissa Schweitzer. But look at the difference between the cadence and the running form here. So Grace has got great turnover. She's got great form. Keeping it together looks good. Grace Gibbons goes to make a pass on Caldwell on the outside. Grace Gibbons, her father Jim, was the uh, wrestling coach at Iowa State. There's a little bit of competition built into her, and we've got a race coming down this last stretch between Caldwell and Gibbons, and Gibbons takes the lead at the long jump pit. 
Well, this is like the third period of a wrestling match, and Grace Gibbons is going to finish this thing. She's a state cross-country champion in 4A and 3A, and now she's a state champion. And it looked like she had a lot left at the end of that race. Grace Gibbons, your champion uh, in this 1500 3A final. Great run by Grace from Gilbert. Grace, was it your strategy to hang back and let the leaders go in the middle? Um, not really. I guess I kind of planned on taking it a little bit slower to avoid the messiness at the start, but I think they kind of got away from me a little bit more than I wanted to, so. Mm -hmm. But I just kind of trusted myself on what I could do that last lap, so. What motivated you during that last lap to give that such a great finish? Um, winning two state titles in one weekend probably is just a cool thing to say you can, you've done. What's it mean to end your uh, junior year with a state record at the state meet? A lot. <laughs> Was it a record? Yeah. By how much? A couple seconds. Oh. All right. <laughs> Lots of emotion. A record for Grace Gibbons. Congratulations, Abby Caldwell from Waverly Shell Rock is second. Madison Waymeyer from Dallas Center Grimes is third. Rebecca Topham, we talked about her a lot this uh, broadcast and this show from Griswold is your champion in 1A. Gwen Wright from Pekin is second. Tiffany Christensen, who's headed to Wichita State to run, sets a record here for Eagle Grove, the senior. Leah Sievert is in second place. Stephanie Jenks in class 4A, the Linmar sophomore, the time of 4.31. She wins gold in the 1500. Now we go to sprints all around. This is sticks all the way, four by one, 4A. Waukee in three, Cedar Rapids Jefferson in four, Des Moines Roosevelt in five, Urbandale in six. Coach, this race is all about the handoffs. All right, strap in, uh, Paul, because this is gonna be quick. Jalen uh, Lewis Roberts is gonna be the second runner, and you ask, why isn't she the anchor? Well, she gets to run longer, depending on what she gets the handoff. So you got your fastest runner on the track running the longest possible uh, distance. Roosevelt with McKenna Schnack, Jalen Roberts Lewis, as you mentioned, has that uh, in the back straightaway. Deanna Lewis will get the handoff here in just a moment. And look at the distance that uh, Jalen has already made up. She made up that huge stagger, and now it's just about hanging onto the baton and finishing. Roosevelt's in five, Urbandale's in six. Watch out for Cedar Rapids Jefferson in lane four. They are also in this race, and it's hard to tell who has the lead coming into the last Well, this is, this is when the coaches are all just going crazy because now the handoffs are over, and now you can just enjoy the race. So, uh, Waukee, Jefferson, and Roosevelt in your final, but it's going to be Des Moines, Roosevelt, Brianna Carter, the sophomore, anchors the Rough Rider run. McKenna and Jalen, you guys are the seniors. You started it off. What's it like to end your career just like this? It is amazing. We've been running together, McKenna and I, since like elementary school. So for us to do our handoff together as it's seniors. It's just a great way to finish it together. Yeah. Last race of our senior year, high school careers. Yeah. Just so glad we're together. Yeah. Do it. How about your handoffs today? <laughs> our handoffs went as smooth as they possibly could. Just smooth all the way around. Tell us about your anchor. You knew that you had that Jefferson kid coming up on you? Yeah, I did. We've been running together for a while now, so I just wanted to make sure I gave it my all and came out first. Congratulations, girls. Thank you. Rough Riders first in Class 4A. Great weekend for them. Cedar Rapids Jefferson second. Urbandale is third in the 4x1 Class 4A. Let's look at the other results. In Class 1A, North Lynn, the Lynx with Abby Kenworth, Kayla Neubauer, Cassie Rawson, and Abby Ingerson, your champion in 1A. Cascade with uh, Rickles, two Rickles, a Meyer, and a Hunt. Cascade, the Cougars, win in 2A, and Boone. Class 3A, Peyton Lyons, Brianne Ospregan, Lindsay Schminke, and Bailey Schminke. Here are the jumpers. The long jump Class 4A event included two flights of 12 competitors. The 24 competitors each made three attempts for the longest distance. The top eight finalists earned three more attempts. The longest distance out of all six jumps determined the winners. Here's a look at the top three long jumpers in Class 4A. Third place went to Elizabeth Bowman, a senior from Sioux City East with 17 feet, 9.75 inches. In second place was Kiara Washman, a senior from Iowa City, City High, with 18 feet, 5.25 inches. Jalen Roberts Lewis was the champion with a distance of 19 feet, 2 inches. The Des Moines Roosevelt senior is the eighth girl in Iowa high school history to clear the 19-foot mark. Okay, Jalen, how sweet is it to win your state championship with a big jump like that? 
It is awesome. Just all my hard work paid off, and especially since the last two years, I wasn't able to make it to state because I scratched all three jumps at districts just to know that I'm the best and I could come out here and prove everyone wrong that ever thought like bad of me. So it's a great feeling, and it's a great way to leave the state of Iowa and long jump and everything. Did it give you a lot of confidence getting that big first jump 18-6 early and then know that you could go for the record? Yes, I was just trying to get a jump in, so it was awesome that it was 18-6. I just really wanted to get a jump in so I could just relax and calm myself down before my last two jumps in the finals. And what are you going to do next year? I'm going to Illinois State University to run track. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Danny Reichert's from Dunkerton is your winner in 4A. Mallory Vauder from BCLUW, good weekend for her. Natalie Moshman of Montezuma, good weekend for her as well. Lindsey Cook from Hudson wins the 2A long jump. Haley Sharp of Davis County is second, and Casey Reuter from Hinton is third. Leslie Taylor, the senior from Mount Pleasant, is your winner, 18 feet, 2 inches from Mount Pleasant. There was blue sky and lots of air for the competitors in the high jump class 3A event. What began as a field of 24 competitors saw the top three finishers clearing more than five feet. Here's a look at the top three class 3A high jumps. Third place was Emma Dow, a junior from Spirit Lake Park with five feet two inches. Second place went to Stephanie McMillan, a senior from Independence with a jump of five feet five inches. The event champion, Alexis Conaway, set a class 3A state meet record clearing five feet nine inches. It was the MOC Floyd Valley seniors fourth straight win in this event. Conaway is only the second athlete in state history to place first in high jump four times. Okay, Alexis, four time state champion. You set the record when you were a freshman. What's it like to jump over five nine today? It's exciting. I mean, going in, you never know what to expect, but we had the perfect day out, great competition, and I felt good. So it's just exciting to get out there and do well. Does winning it as a senior on your way out make a difference? It's a fun way to end. I mean, I had done great in the past, but to get this last one and just feel good about it, it's a really nice way to end. Conaway is not done. We'll get to her in a moment. Caitlin Applegate from GMG Garwin is your winner in Class 1A. Kelsey Hurley from Fremont Mills is in second place. In 2A, Maria Rage from Union LaPorte City. With the cleared, she cleared 5-6. And Kelly DeGeorge, the sophomore from Pleasant Valley, wins the high jump in Class 4A. Our last race of the day, and usually the team title comes down to this, MOC Floyd Valley in three, Dubuque Wallard in four, Assumption is in five, West Delaware is in six. This one yeah. is uh, four times around the lap, each relay runner runs at once. That's right, and they stay in the lanes here, their first leg, and then the second leg breaks on the back stretch. Um, this is the pride of every track team and coach, you know, to have a great four by four. This is traditionally the last race of the meet. It's traditionally the highest profile uh, relay of the meet. Your top regional leaders coming into the meet was MOC Floyd Valley, Davenport Assumption, and West Delaware. MOC Floyd Valley won this race last year. Pella was second and Assumption was third. All three of those uh, teams are either trying to repeat or improve upon last year's result. Right, okay, every team has a couple of good quarter milers, but fewer teams have four good quarter milers, and that's what championship teams have, and that's what the team champions always have. The Lady Dutch are out in front here as uh, we're moving along. Rebecca Muhlenberg, Daphne Hemmonson, Katie Landheis, and uh, there's kind of, a, I don't know if you call it a secret weapon, that's very hard, <laughs> hardly a secret with MOC Floyd Valley and Alexis Conaway is uh, lining up to run that anchor leg. Right, how much confidence can you have at the beginning of your four by four when you know you have an anchor like Alexis Conaway? And really the whole team, you can't just rely on one runner, mm -hmm. but it's great to have uh, that type of runner at the end. And we're not quite there as we get to the third run, that's Katie Landheis. Katie was on the state championship volleyball and basketball teams for the Lady Dutch. And, you know, some coaches will tell you, and I'm sure you would agree, that you like to have them competing in those other sports. It just, it, sure. that way when it comes to the big stage, you just perform. Right, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, research that says the best athletes are the ones that perform all these different sports. And here we go into that final lap. It's still MOC Floyd Valley well out in front in this race. Okay, Alexis got third in the open four. Besides being a high jump champion, she ran a 58-4 in her open four. 
And here she is, the last race, uh, the last event of her high school career. She will go to Iowa State to play volleyball. Her coach at Iowa State calls her one of the best athletes they've ever brought into the program, and this is one of the reasons why she makes it look easy, anchoring the Lady Dutch to a championship. Great finish for MOC Floyd Valley from Orange City. The second leg, you gave him the lead, and you didn't hold back. Tell us about your leg. Um, it was the first time I've run the second leg in a while, actually. Um, cutting, I was a little nervous, but I knew that the biggest part was just getting as much of a lead as possible. So mm -hmm. just kept that in mind and just ran. So. And you were just trying to get the baton to Alexis, right? Yeah, my goal is always to get it to Alexis with a decent lead or something she can do it with. But. Did great. Okay, Alexis, all the state titles you won this year as a senior. Is, tell us about winning this last state title as a senior with your teammates. It's so exciting. I mean, always the best way to end is going out with a win, and I'm just so thankful for these girls who have been with me the entire time. Throughout the race, I just started smiling because I could tell they were going to do something awesome. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. They were awesome, setting a meet record there. Assumption is second ADM Adele is in third place. Tri-Center Neola, one. North Lynn, two. Central Elkater, three in class one, a four by four. Mount Vernon, Cascade and Western Christian go one, two, three in class two, a four by four. Always a fun race to watch and call. And Pleasant Valley, your champion, Linmar and Southeast Polk go one, two, three in class four, a four by 400 meter relay. Coach, just an outstanding meet. I mean, you got to experience it. You've seen this meet before. What stands out from you? What will you take away? Well, I think the distance races, obviously, but Jalen Roberts Lewis, I mean, she was great. After what happened, she had a disappointing year last year and come back and do as well as she did this year was great. And other, we've seen distance performances by underclassmen. We mm -hmm. see great performances by upperclassmen. It's just, Iowa track is very strong right now. Right, and it's such a great way for seniors to go out. It's the last event that they're gonna do, and it gets kind of emotional after they realize that that's the last time they'll compete as a high school athlete. And if you're, as you said, with Alexis Conaway coming down that stretch knowing that her high school career is done, but uh, there was also some team hardware, not just individuals, but there was also some great teams. Right. We were talking about points and how important it is for points, and 1A Northland won it pretty handily over Griswold, but 57 points they scored. In 2A Cascade, run it by two points. They scored 49 over Hudson, who had 47. In 3A, Assumption ran away with it, 107 points. And in 4A, we talked about Pleasant Valley. They came ready to play, and they run it by 10, nine points, 82.5. And that's their first team title in 23 years for the Spartans. All right, Coach Jim Kirby, thank you so very much for all your insight. And that will do it uh, for the 2014 Track and Field Championship highlights. You can watch it again online at IPTV.org slash sports. And we invite you to tune in to IPTV for the 2014 Softball Championships. Those will be broadcast live Friday, July 25th. Five classes of action beginning at 10 a.m. I'm Paul Yeager. For the entire crew at Iowa Public Television, thank you so very much for joining us. Funding for the 2014 Iowa Girls High School State Track and Field Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Whether you live in rural Iowa or in the big city, the Iowa Network Services family of companies and your local provider are working together to keep you connected by offering technology and business solutions like internet, data networking, and other business services. The INS family of companies keeping communities connected today and tomorrow. Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay, is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Track and Field Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community.
Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service.